Hey folks, it's Chad here, Airstream of Greensboro, the only Airstream dealer here in North Carolina and the largest Airstream dealer in the Carolinas. Now I'm back today with a review of the 2023 Interstate 24 GL. This one has the E1 package and the auto level option. Let's jump into a walk around of the outside and the inside. Now as I start the outside of the 2023 Interstate 24 GL, so this is gonna be the Grand Lounge uh, version of the Interstate. And honestly, I really like it. Uh, you know, depending on what you're gonna use the Interstate for, what, you know, if it's a true Grand Touring uh, vehicle, then you know, the GT is gonna be potentially the better one or the better option. But this just seems to really open the space up quite a bit. So starting in the front, it is gonna be on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis, the 3500 chassis. You're going to have all of the great features that you get with Mercedes. And something to know with Airstream is um, every Airstream is going to come with every option that you can get from Mercedes. So you don't have to kind of guess, like, am I getting the options that I want? Uh, does it have the features that I want? If it's an Airstream, it's going to have every option that you can get from Mercedes. So this will have the adaptive cruise control. It's going to have heated seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, collision avoidance, lane keep, uh, backup camera, you know, all of that kind of stuff, uh, park sensors, you know, really everything that you could get with Mercedes, it's going to have it because it's the Airstream. Now they do put Alcoa wheels on it. That's something Airstream does. Now this doesn't have the little uh, lug nut caps on it. That's something Airstream actually puts those in a bag uh, for you to put on once you take ownership. That's just so they don't fall off as they go down the road. Now coming down the side, this is in the silver color. There are three color options that you can do with the interstate. And I'm gonna put a link below with all of the specifications. If you're really looking to kind of get nitty gritty with specifications, just go down and click that link. That will take you to the page that gives you all of that. You can see the awning lights are kind of glowing just underneath right there. I have those on uh, and all the lights on actually right now. Uh, so you got silver, black, and white are your three color options. And then there's some different color options on the inside as well, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Now you do have that power step there that will go in and out. And you do have an option to leave that step out when you're camping. They do give you a really nice stainless steel tip for your exhaust. And then you also have the Alcoa wheel for your dualies in the back. Now they're gonna, they ship these with Continental tie tires. As far as the size of these, these are gonna be LT215 85R16s. And then you can see some of the different things to do with the wheel well. It'd be cool if they black out the wheel well, but they do not do that. Now this one, because it's the E package, there's no propane on board. So you would normally have a little propane access panel here for your remote fill valve. You don't have that. That's just gonna be a nice continuation of that body line right there. Now you do have a, another solar connection right here. There's also one of these on the other side. That's the ZAMP. You've got power right there, and you've got a cable connection right there if you want to do an outside TV that is set up. Now, as far as windows that open on the interstate, it's just going to be these two windows here. They're going to open. You are able to open the whole back, and there's a screen that will come down. And then on the other side, there's also two windows that open right here, and then two windows down there that open. Now, as far as the back goes, you can see your backup camera right there. You got my finger pointing into the right spot. That is uh, the factory one from Mercedes. You also have an additional additional camera that's gonna show kind of a rear view mirror look. And I'll show you that on the inside. Now, as far as storage, this is the E1 package. So a question that I get, get a lot and often is, what space does the E1 package take up? And I can show you that. So that's gonna be underneath here. Now behind this box right here, this panel, there's a large box in there and that is the control system for the E1 package uh, with the Volta battery system. So that's gonna house the inverter, the charge controller, all of those kinds of things are gonna be in that box right there underneath. So you would generally have some storage going back on this side, the left side of this or the driver's side there's usually something in there. So you don't have that space. You know, like that's the water heater down there, part of the water heater system. But you're essentially losing part of 
the storage that you would have underneath the seat. Now you still have storage going all the way back to this point. You can see there, if I can show there. So you still have room to store things back here if you desire. Now this, this uh, particular 24 GL has the front bed option and some pillows and a comforter that comes with that. You've got your poles in here for your tables. This is gonna house or store all of your blinds, or not blinds, uh, window covers for the front windshield. Those are magnetic and they just kind of stick in place. And then back here is gonna be another pole that's in a nice little leather bag for the tables to be able to have a spot for your tables to hold up. And then this is your goodie box that Airstream sends. It's gonna have things like your outside shower. There's even like um, wrenches. I'm not sure why they give you all of that, but they do. Um, so various things. And then also your 30 amp smart plug is also in this box as well. And it's an Airstream box. Like some people would want to keep that just for the Airstream box part of it. Now there's a nice cover that will cover, uh, kind of cover this area. And then this has the ability to uh, attach so you can hide even more so you know, to kind of prevent people from looking through the windows. Now this is part of your bed area. So when you're sleeping in this particular coach, the sofa is going to lay down and I'll show you that in a little bit. And they do give you some nice cubbies on each side with USB right there. And there's little lights as well, which I like a lot. USB on that side. So both sides are going to have USB. And then there's some additional storage that is on either side of the back section of the Interstate 24 GL. Now that screen there that comes down, that is powered. It will power, you know, to come down. Um, you just hit a button for that to come down. That's all in the Firefly system. Uh, and then you have some storage in your doors there. Those are your lug, lug nut caps. And there's, looks like some instructions for the Alco wheels right there. And then the additional side, same thing. Your door lockers right there if you wanna lock this uh, manually. Now you do have to shut the driver's side door first and then the passenger side door you'll shut that so that's the back of the interstate 24 gl you do have a tow hitch here with a seven pin that's hidden behind this cover right here but they put that on there to make it nice and look nice yeah airstream is going for having the best in class class b uh, touring coach possible now the awning in there, that is a Gerard style awning that will come out. It's a little windy today, so I don't have it out. Uh, it does have the wind sensor, so it actually went in on me earlier as I was prepping for the video because it did get a little bit windy and it went in on me. Uh, now coming around to the business side of the coach, you're gonna find one exhaust pipe. Now that's not for the generator because remember this has the E1 package. That is gonna be for your Timberline uh, diesel fired heating system now i'm gonna try to get a shot see if i can make this happen yeah there we go so there's the battery pack if you're wondering for the e1 package that's the battery pack there it's, it's 12 kilowatt hours and then you can see the piping for the e1 system right there and then that's just the exhaust for that and then you can also see one of the four leveling systems uh, levelers there for your leveling system. So there's a shot underneath and you can also see, I think the airbags, because this does have standard, the air suspension. And it's just on the back, but it significantly improves the ride uh, of the interstate. And then we do have, as I mentioned, the 30 amp smart plug right there. It's significantly easier to plug in. This is also gonna lock in place. And then on top of the, the actual plug itself, it has a light that will show you um, if the power is good. Now that cable itself is not gonna be um, a surge protector, but it will tell you if the power is not, something with the power is funky, and it'll give you some indication there as well. And then just kind of a shot in, so you can see the front part of that frame system. Now, as far as the coach, one thing that they have it done that I would love to see them do is to integrate all of these different panels into a body panel so it would be seamless. Something like they did on the range line. That's one of the things I really like that they did on the range line. They haven't done it on the interstate yet. I feel like that eventually is gonna happen at some point. I also think somebody is doing that so they wouldn't be the first. 
Now behind these panels, you have a couple of things. Uh, this first one is gonna be the controls for your macerator pump. And that's the only option for uh, getting things out is gonna be the macerator pump. There's a service light right there. And then you've got different different buttons for uh, running the, wa the waste pump, retracting the hose itself. Your, your cable inlet is also right here. And then you've got your gray valve and your black valve. So these are remote valves. You're just going to hit the button there. It opens the valve up. And then when you're finished, you'll close the valve. And then that retracts the, uh, the actual hose itself, which I'll show you in a second. So this is a, it's a macerator pump. When you flip the switch on, it's going to actually actively pump out that stuff. Now there's instructions right here as far as how to use it right there on the door. So you can never forget how to use it because there are instructions right there and you're going to want to read those instructions. Now underneath there and behind this door that we would normally say is the outside shower is actually the macerator pump. Uh, let's see, how do I get that? There we go. Doing stuff with one hand sometimes is a little bit difficult, but there's the pump. So it just pulls out. Now what the reason people like this, and this is kind of falls into that more luxurious uh, option is this is so much smaller. It's easy to use. You've got just that one little cap there that will, that will go right into your tank. You do have a shutoff valve uh, for when you're done, you can close this. So then it's, it's completely shut off. And then because we have the retract option, I can just hit that button pulls itself right back into place which is just i mean awesome and then you do have a black tank flush right here and it talks about what to do with this you want to make sure that when you're using that black tank flush that you have the black valve open and you've got this pulled out and put into place so it can drain and then you just kind of tuck this back up in here as well to be able to shut that door it kind of tucks up in you want to give yourself a little bit of room and it's going to tuck in like so and then this door will shut back and you can close that door. And then the next one is going to be behind this door. This is your outside shower. I showed you the hose inside that plugs into here. And it's kind of like a, uh, uh, a garden hose style in, but you do have hot, hot and cold water out here. If you have your hot water turned on. And then the front one is going to be your city inlet valve so this is where you're going to bring your city water in you can fill your tank and then there's a dry camp option winterization option and then city and then fixtures you're going to turn this valve to whichever one that you're needing to use and if you're wondering how to use it there's a qr code right there to where you can click in and see uh, some instructions on how to use this and lock that back back into place and then moving to the front now with the mercedes sprinter chassis the door for the gas or the diesel is going to be behind this little door here now this actually gets shut in place when the door when the driver's side door is shut so you're you're not able to open that. So when you lock the door with the key, you can't get, you cannot get into there, which is a nice feature to have. You do have the, the fiberglass running boards that are, that Airstream adds as well as the body ground effects package. And that's part of, uh, the body ground effects package is part of what they do here on the front. I just love the look of that. Uh, before i go inside i do want to talk about the key a little bit so this is the mercedes key i think you get four keys with every sprinter chassis for some reason um so that's a cool thing yeah so lock and unlock and then you can open the door from here now there isn't any uh buttons to be able to push on the door as you try to go in um that's something i would like to see mercedes add you know whether it's a button or just a touch sensitive uh, handles. I feel like that's something they should have. Honestly, uh, the Pro Master has that option, so definitely should have it here. But as far as the the key goes, you can press 
that button there to open this door, kind of like you would with your minivan potentially. Now, as we step inside, as I mentioned, this is the lounge. So you're gonna have four captain's chairs as, a, as well as the sofas in the back. As far as the wood that Airstream uses, it is a light Italian plywood. There's a laminate on there. And, uh, and that will change depending on what option you pick. But I do like some things that you can just see as far as the finishing goes with Airstream. For instance, just the way they finish this step out. And it continues all the way back under the seat. Um, they just do an excellent job when it comes to finishing. Uh, back here, there's this nice aluminum, aluminum accent piece that they put there. And, yeah, I'm sure it's covering something, but it just looks really nice. And then behind um, the screen part of the door here, they also give you this felt just to try to, try to make everything look nice and seamless. Uh, I like that about it. It looks really nice. And then now as far as getting into this one, because it's the, the GL, um, it's very open when you go to get in. And this front section also feels really open compared to the GL or the GT, I should say, the GT. Now you're getting essentially the kitchen from the 19, the Interstate 19 right there because there is less space since you're taking up quite a bit of space with these chairs. Um, as you first come in, what you'll see is the screen. The screen does pull across, all the way across. So a very nice screen. Now, one thing I have noticed, is just something to be aware of, but you wanna make sure that you don't turn this chair into the screen, screen because I can see that chair, when you rotate it, um, not, not, doing, not, not being nice with, the, uh, with that screen there. Now, it's a cool screen. It's a full one that opens all the way across. Um, you know, it is what it is. I think it, there's parts about it, just because as I was trying to put that in, uh, like it, you kind of had to like really manipulate it to get it to fit right in there nice. It's just, it's a really cool screen, but uh, it also feels fragile to me. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and of course you can't use that as a grab handle. You do have a grab handle right here. So if you need some help stepping in, you can do that. So we'll step in again. And then another another place where I like what they did, it's got this black kind of pleather here, just to kind of close off this back and finish that out. That's nice as well. Now your controls for your sofa and your ottomans are right here, which I think would be better if they put them a little bit further up, but it's powered, so that's not a big deal. And then this has the E1 package, as I mentioned, and this is the your battery disconnect for the E1 and then there is a step hold button. I love how the step hold button is finished in the same style as the Volta button. Uh, I just like the Airstream connected those and made those look similar and then gave you this really nice faceplate with the Airstream Interstate logo, Airstream logo on it. So that's nice. And then you do have a smaller screen here for controlling pretty much everything. Your larger and main screen is going to be behind this door here so you've got your main larger screen right there this is the volta screen we'll talk about it a little bit more in a second and then you have one more screen as i come to the back right here that you can use to control things uh, throughout the coach this is going to be your timberline controller I'm not sure why they tucked it back here but this is where they put it for the e1 package on the interstate 24 gl i'm guessing you know there's not enough room they put a third screen here. In the future, I think they're going to integrate Volta into Firefly, and I bet they'll integrate the Timberline system into Firefly as well. They just haven't done that yet. And then on the GL, you're also going to have this front TV that comes down. So if you have you know youngsters that are riding with you, which I can see this being that style floor plan, there's really nice, comfortable bucket seats here for them to sit in, and there's a TV that comes down. And then there's also the TV here in the back for the sofa area that is that is right across from the sofa. And it's on one of those arms to where it can come out as well uh, when, you're, when you're wanting to use the TV. Now, as far as plugging into the TV, all of your HDMIs come to this area here. So you've got your different HDMIs, they're all labeled. That's gonna be your pre-wire for your satellite on top that comes right there. And then another another HDMI there. 
you have all of your TV inputs, TV antennas, those types of things, subwoofer control right here. Uh, and there's another QR code right there for you to jump into some Airstream videos about this system, which you're probably gonna wanna do. Now, the air connected system, the antenna is up there. Uh, what you'll, that box will actually go back here. They run the cabling for the air connected system uh, to back here. So it will sit back here. Not sure if there's another, let me open this one. Yeah, so it's gonna tuck in. They probably just tuck it in like right there somewhere, probably maybe on top of that, that board right there. Yeah. So but that's where the air connected system will go if you opt to have that added uh, at the dealership. Now, as far as these seats go, um, they're very comfortable. They're not the same seat that you get from Mercedes. So this is a different seat than the Mercedes seat. And I'm not sure where Airstream sources this seat, but I do know they put the leather on here. They recover the seats for the Mercedes part. So you have the same super soft ultra leather. You also have these really cool cup holders that come out right there. There's two. And then they just kind of go back into place. And then there's a little kind of magazine. This is very old school to me, but little magazine holder right there. And then you do have uh, some USB, two USB, no, actually four USBs right here. So you can charge all your devices all at the same time right there. And then a nice little cubby there. Uh, your controls for the air suspension is right here. I don't think you really need to do much with this, but it's right there. It's the VB air suspension system. And then these chairs do have the ability to move forward and backwards. They also can turn and face the center and then you can recline these back and forward as well. So nice seats, they're very comfortable. I like that you've got armrest on both sides. Hopefully you can see this in the video, but I do like how there's armrest on both sides. This window here opens, that one opens. Now the shade here, that's gonna be powered. You can't pull that down. You have to use the Firefly system. You can also see the JBL speakers that they add to the interstate. I like that too. Uh, yep. So I like the, just the arm here. The seat is really nice. It's very soft. I like the Airstream logo that they put right there. Uh, and then your seat belt is integrated into the seat. It's just kind of a nice feature. So it's all in the seat. You don't have to worry about it as you're turning the seats around to make them a little bit more comfortable. You don't have to worry about that. Now let's look at storage. The, the Interstate GL, 24 GL, just has an enormous amount of storage. So that's your pack with all your, your manuals and books and stuff that come with it. A lot of that's going to be online nowadays. More storage right there. <laughs> storage. I mean, it's storage for days in here. So all of this storage, all the way across, that is all storage. I think that's to me, that feels like more storage that you get in an Airstream travel trailer. And then across from that, you have even more storage. I'm not sure what you would bring with you to fill up all of these storage areas. And then of course, in the back side, you have this super, super deep storage area with the light going across. Um, I can't even reach back there. I'm not sure what you put back there. You'd have to have a step stool or something to even be able to get what you put back there out. And then there's kind of partitions back in that area on both sides right there as well. So there is a, for a smaller coach, for a class B, there is a ton, a ton of storage um, for this coach. You could definitely use this as a camper if you wanted to go, you know, go camping. Now these little let, uh, buttons here, these are just for pulling to open it. They don't actually lock these doors in place. That's something that does happen on the range line, but not on these. Now, as far as your kitchen area, you're gonna have an undermounted stainless steel sink right there. Now this faucet doesn't have a pull down or anything. That's just winterization fluid. Because you have the E1 package, you do not have the propane stovetop. Instead, see if I can find an angle. You're gonna have the true induction one burner stovetop here and you'll need to have um you know 
stove accessories that will work with that. Under the sink, you're gonna have a little sponge holder. You've got a small little pull out, full pull out there. And then a larger pull out with your silverware organizer. There's also under light all the way around the sink. There's lights that run underneath. That's really nice. They're running all the way down. And there's lights that run all the way across the top, all the way around the whole coach. Very nice look. You know, of course, LED lights all around. And then under that, you're gonna have your tiny little refrigerator. There is a spot for a couple of eggs if you need to bring those with you. And drink holders there. And there's a little freezer just above. This is actually on currently because I have the Volta system on. That just kicks on automatically. Beside that, you're gonna have your microwave. It is the pull-out drawer style microwave. Kind of a kind of a neat microwave. And then another drawer underneath the microwave. Actually, two more drawers underneath the microwave. There's another one right there. And then one of your tables is actually hidden right here. It's got a nice little storage area. Keeps it kind of out of the way when you don't need that table out. Uh, and then there's a the other table. It's actually behind the seat back there. Now for the sofa area, it is a very nice, very comfortable sofa seat. And then now, one of the things to me that I think should change on the Interstate GL is those buttons up there. So I can't, I can't recline the sofa back here. I'm just looking right now to make sure that I'm not missing something, but I don't see a way to recline this. So the only way to lay this back a little bit is to come up here. And I can lay that back a little bit to make it more comfortable. And then now, now it's a little, yeah, so that now this is more comfortable because it's laid back a little bit. Uh, it'd be nice if they just give you one more, like even if it's just one plug uh, switch right here, in addition to that one so that you could adjust this sofa while you're sitting back here. But you can put your feet up. The TV is in a perfect spot. There's USBs everywhere. Um, let me turn turn the camera back around, but USB is right there, on, right there on that side under the TV. You also have 110 power down there. And with the E1 package, all you have to do is flip on the inverter and everything's powered. You can see like a little bit of a wheel well back there. That's interesting. But it, but I guess by doing that, it does give you more room for your feet while you're sitting back here um, or lounging back here. And then, of course, the blinds back here are powered. So you would not do that uh, yourself. You can just simply come up here and click blinds and then run the blinds down if you want to run those down and they'll just come right down. Isn't that cool? And the thing I do love about having powered blinds is the ability to do all the shades at one time. All of the shades will just go down at one time. I mean, that's, that's just fantastic. You know, I love that. Now you have to do like your front section, you've got to actually get your magnet shades out and then you know put those up there for that. But, and then when you wake up in the morning and you're ready to let all the light in, you just hit the shade up button and all the shades start to come up. And that, I mean, that's just so cool. That's just a cool thing. It's the little things in life, right? So let's talk about the Firefly system a little bit. And then we'll talk about the E1 package. So Firefly system, you, you've you probably seen this. It's on a lot of motorhomes, uh, not just the Airstream. You know, Integra is also using this. Um, the main home screen for the larger screen is gonna show you everything. Your smaller screens are actually gonna give you two pages. So I can show that, the so page one, page two. But it's all showing you the same stuff. It's just showing it uh, in a different layout. Now on the home, the main screen, you can see your fresh tank, your gray tank, and your black tank. You can also turn your water pump on. You can turn your tank heater on and then see the chassis battery. Now this is not gonna give you much information because it's actually in the Volta system. It's basically just giving you voltage 13.6. Uh, you can turn all of the lights on or off. You can also do a dim, a mid dim, and then there's a cinema option, which is kind of cool. The cinema option, um, 
kind of dims the lights above like that. It's really kind of a cool thing. Uh, I wonder if I hit cinema. Oh, that's cool. So cinema actually runs the uh, blinds down too. Isn't that neat? I was confused because I thought I ran the blinds up and then they were down. So this is kind of your cinema look here. The overhead lights are off, the blinds are down, and then you just got some accent lights that are up to give you a little bit of illumination. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll take everything on and then I guess I have to go to the shades page and click that to get those back up. And then you can run your awning out here, which is, you know, it's a powered awning. So you just hit extend and it's going to run out. It is a really nice long awning. I'm not going to leave this out long because it's kind of a windy day, but it's a, I mean, it's, it's as long as they can possibly give you, which is really cool because some manufacturers, I don't know how they decide what awning to give you. Um, but it's a very long awning. It's three arms. It's that Gerard style awning where the arms come out and then you've got lighting there, right there. And you've got lighting in the actual end of the awning, which I think is super cool. Now there's not any arms or anything that come down. You don't have to bring arms down and click them in anything. It's all, it's all in there. It's all handled. And then as far as when you want to put it up, you just come in and hit retract and it pulls it right back in. And then there's a larger shade or screen in the back of the coach will hit down. So this is more of a buck screen. This would allow you to open the back doors and have this buck screen that's going down, have that down blocking um, any bugs from getting in. So that's separate from from your shades that's a whole separate screen that control is right there and again there's one right back there if you need if you're back there and need to control it you can do that back there now as far as your side screens or right, like uh, you also can control your hvac here now, you can't turn it on and off but you can change the temperature uh, the next one down is going to be all of your different lights that you can turn on and off there's undercares lights that light up just the campsite side uh, and then you go into what would normally be generator this is just going to be your power um, screen, and it doesn't really show you a whole lot. It will show a little bit. It'll show what's being shed to maintain power, uh, what's on, what's off. Uh, and then that's your HVAC system there. So you've got um, climate control. You can turn that on and off right there. Uh, turn your fan on and off. And then this fan, vent fan, is actually the fan. A fantastic fan that's right there. Let me shut that door. Let's see if that helps with the glare. Yeah. Just a little bit with the glare. And oh, and it's, it's a lot quieter now. Um, and then the last one is gonna be your shades, and then just your your other controls as far as settings and things like that. The screen brightness, you can set all that kind of stuff up there. Now, the cool thing about the Volta system. So like, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a 12 kilowatt hour battery pack down there. It's a 3,200 watt inverter, I believe. Check that, that description down there or in the description, check that link. But in this screen, it's gonna give you a state of charge right here. So you can see where we are currently. Now at this current power, all I'm running currently is, I have, well, I have every light on, every single light is on. Uh, the Firefly system is running. Um, the front radio is on just because the battery disconnected is on that radio there. So that's all the stuff that is currently powering. And it's telling me at like 35% charge, we've got 44 hours of time remaining. If you're wondering like how much time can I get on this thing? Well, depending on how you use it, it can last quite a while. Okay. Um, they told us, cause you do have an additional alternator on here with the Volta system or the E1 system. If I remember correctly, you can charge the battery fully within a couple of hours going down the road uh, with that charger, which is, I mean, that's pretty, pretty powerful. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Now, the thing about the Volta system, there's no generator on board. So if you run this completely dead while you're dry camping, your only option is to plug it in to a generator or to plug it in to sure power 
or to go driving down the road for a while to charge that battery back up. There's not a generator on board that will charge this all the way back up. Now, for it to charge when you're on shore power, so if you're connected to shore power, you have to have the inverter turned on. That's something that we found out uh, kind of the hard way. So you'll flip this on, and now the Volta system is, the inverter's turned on. And then you want to set this to the state of charge that you have as far as what um, plug you're actually plugged into to get the, the charge rate. So it will charge at whatever amp you're telling it. It doesn't automatically figure out that it's 30 amp, but you've got it you've got it selected to 15 amp, it'll only charge at a 15 amp rate. So you'll want to change this to match whatever you're plugged into. Then now you can go back. I've got the inverter running. I just want you to notice how much time has come off of this just because the inverter is running. It's cut it almost in half. That inverter pulls quite a bit of power, quite a bit of watts. And that's the only thing it's running. I don't, the only thing I changed was I turned that inverter on. So just something to know about. If you don't need it on, don't turn it on. And then the thing I love about this is it's quiet. It's dead quiet in here because there's no generator running right now, right? The engine's not running. That's that's turned off. It's just the Volta system. And I can come over here and click on the AC system. And in a few minutes, it clicks on and now there's air blowing straight out of the AC system. That is just super, super cool. Um, now the, doesn't look like the compressor's kicked on yet, but it's just so cool that you can turn that on and now I've got 18 hours remaining, 16 hours remaining. So that's gonna keep going down because it's constantly looking at the watts that are, that's being drawn versus the amount of charge that you have left and giving you an estimated amount of time remaining on your battery system. So I'm gonna turn that back off. This is, you know, I don't wanna kill the battery. Turn the, uh, let that kick off. And once that's off, then I can turn the inverter off. Now, while that's cycling down, I'm gonna pop back here to, uh, me, uh, I might jump out of the video and come back in in a second once the AC's off. It's getting ready to cut off, I think. There we go. Okay, so now I can come back here. So I want to talk about the Timberline system a little bit. It's a diesel fired system. This is going to be for your hot water and for your heat. So the bottom here, you're basically going to have two zones, front zone and back zone. And then this section here is going to be what element is turned on. So the heater, this one there, that's going to be gas or diesel in this case. So this one's diesel fired. You turn that on and that's going to get you hot water. This bottom one is an electric element. It's not very, I think it's 5,000 BTU, I think is what they told me. Um, that's just going to be enough to maintain temperature in the glycol. But once you start trying to pull uh, hot water or actually get heat, that's not going to be enough to give you heat. You'll want to have both of these on or, or at least have uh, the heater one on. That's going to give you actual BTU power uh, to get hot water or to heat the coach. Now you set your temperatures over here. If you want the rear to be turned on, you click that on and it will be clicking on right there. And now it's gonna be on. You can turn the, the fan to manual or auto. I'm gonna turn that back off. And then there's the front zone, same thing. Turn it on and off right there. And it's a very simple system. I hate, sorry about the glare, but a very simple system to use. There are some settings. It will give you codes. If there's something not right, it'll throw a code that pops up up here and you tap on that. And it will tell you if the glycol is low, it'll say glycol is low. Uh, if something's not connected right, it'll, it'll tell you that. So it's a very simple system to use. You basically just turn it on, turn it off, and that's it. And now remember the top heat is going to be the diesel fired part of it. Element is the electric part of it. To actually get heat out of it, you've got to have the heater part turned on. And then right beside it, you've got another screen to where you can run, you can turn things on and off, whatever you might want to do while you're in the bedroom area. And I think that's part of why they put this back here so you don't have to walk all the way back to the front. Even though it's not that far, you don't have to walk up there to get to another screen. Now, the next thing I want to show you is kind of the layout here if you do put this in the bed setup. So uh, first thing you'll do is run the 
sofa itself down. And again, that's 12 volts. That's so gonna just pull right off the battery. Now, if you have the inverter turned off of the Volta system, all of your 12 volt stuff is still, still gonna work because that's just coming directly from 12 volt power. It's all of your 110 appliances that are not gonna work. So air conditioner is one of those things. The true induction cooktop would not work without the inverter turned on. Uh, TVs, those types of things. Now this is in its spot and then you basically just push these down. You can tuck those below and tuck, tuck your seat belts in. And then there's additional little um, pieces that will go back there if you just need a little bit more room. Now let me set the camera down and see if I can give you an idea of what I will look like laying down there. Okay. So remember, I'm about 5'10". So there is enough room. Actually, I could go a little bit further. I just don't want to put my shoes on the on the bed. There's lights right there, reading lights. And you've got more speakers back here. Uh, plenty of room. It's fairly comfortable. Um, you know, yeah, you can feel the different parts of the seats here. And if you really, I mean, like if you, if you just wanted to sleep in this for a little bit, like this was something that you were going to do, you know, you know, like you're going camping for a week or for a weekend, like that's plenty comfortable for that. Um, I have heard of folks putting um, mattress covers over top of this. I even had a customer come in recently that traded in a B for a B plus, and they actually put a king bed mattress right in here back here just left it down and it was a king bed mattress back here and so it was always a mattress and with the front seats this would definitely be a coach that you could do that with so that's kind of the sofa the way when it's laid down into the bed and as far as putting it back up you do have to pull these out on both sides and then we just come back up here I'm gonna run that sofa back up. I'm just holding this button right here. And the sofa's up and then the two ottomans can go back into their little spots. And once they're in the positions like they are now, you come back and then you can put <clears throat> these back into their spots. And that goes right there. Right there and then these always kind of push forward so you push those back as well get your armrests back in place and then you are good to go you're back in your sofa position and again you can tuck these back in all of these seat belts are going to connect to steel and something cool about this coach so if you're looking for a somewhat of a comfortable people hauler you have seats for one two three four five six seven eight nine so this coach can move nine people around their seat belts for nine people and then from a comfort standpoint you could definitely move uh seven people comfortably because you've got or well six people comfortably seven technically as well but two two and then if you had three people sitting here they would be fairly comfortable, definitely comfortable if there was two sitting there. So if you're looking for something that can get, you know, you can move people around and uh, you've got a restroom, you've got a little bit of a kitchen, you've got a place for drinks, uh, you can make a dinner or a snack if you need to, and you've got plenty of storage. This is definitely the coach for that. Now, as far as the bathroom, the kind of funny joke, the very first video that I ever did was of an Interstate 19, and I'm pretty sure I forgot to do the bathroom. So bathroom, you have the little mirror that comes out. You've got a place for your shower head to go. Now the sink and the shower are the same faucet. So this will come out oh, and connect right there. Connects into here. And then it goes back down into there. This is kind of the, just the way that a lot of people have done it for a long time. Um, I like the range line better because the, the sink that's in the bathroom can be just pushed out of the way. That's the way I would probably prefer it to not really use it. 
Uh, you do have another fan that's right there in the in the bathroom area so while you're taking a shower um, you can turn that on and kind of get everything out it's also vented in here for heat but if you want some heat you can put that right there that needs to be turned that way yep, that way it opens down and not up <laughs> that makes way more sense you got a spot for toilet paper and it does have um, a cover to kind of make it as water resistant or waterproof as possible and then drain right there now this is going to be a, por a plastic toilet not porcelain that's just to save weight that is not urine that is from winterization and then let me let me pop in to this and sit down just to kind of see you know from a size standpoint it's tight i mean it's a wet bath they're tight that's all i can tell you it yeah and then now sitting down there's plenty of room to use the bathroom i could even shut the door um getting in here is going to be a little bit tougher like it's not as easy as just going into a bathroom and actually this would almost be a better shower position than to try to stand up the whole time while you're trying to take a shower um but it is a wet bath wet baths are what they are and if you're looking for a class b with a wet bath you know what you're looking at right because it's a class b and pretty much every class b nowadays has a bath so that's the bathroom there. Let me put this camera over here so I can put the TV down. It's got a little pull tab right there and then it will lock into place. So you can kind of like just let it hang. Okay, so there's there's this position here, which I don't really like. If I was actually sitting down, I'd want that to face down a little bit, but you don't have the option. There's not a other, like another hole right there. Um, now you can pull this tab out. Let's see, right, right there, you pull that out and then that will allow it to kind of go free. So you kind of position it down a little bit. So if you're sitting in these seats, you're in a better position position to see it, as you can see there. And then it just kind of tucks up and locks into place right there. So that's 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 the TV there. And then they do give you an additional radio. This is so you're able to listen to tunes, listen to the radio without having to have the whole dash Mercedes system turned on. They give you the option uh, to have a whole nother radio, Bluetooth FM, FM AM radio, all that stuff in there. You do have Sirius XM radio in there, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, so this is kind of the inside walkthrough of the 2023 Interstate 24 GL with the, all of the seats that you can have. This also has the auto level, which I'll talk about towards the end of the video. But just to give you kind of a better shot of the whole thing, because I didn't really do that earlier. I've just kind of been bouncing around like somebody with ADD, which I'm pretty sure I do have. Cup holders right there. So a nice size coach. This feels bigger to me than the GT. So I want to go up to the cockpit and talk a little bit about that. One of the things I do like with these seats, they're very comfortable. Um, if you're comparing this to, say, the range line, the range line seats just don't compare. This button will close that side door. You also have that button there to close that side door. And you can just hit the latch on the, um, the door and it will also open. Now, as far as the seats go, the, there's armrest on one side. Then that's going to be your armrest for the other side. Now these are adjustable you go all the way down and then you can raise it up as far as you want it to be or put it out of the way you do have thigh support there which is very nice it's not powered you kind of pull this up and then pull it out now the seats are powered adjustable i think they're what four way four way or five way maybe um those controls are going to be right there and then you do have three memory seat uh, options on both sides so both the driver and the passenger side get three memory seat options and I love that because the first one is going to be, you know, one is going to be whoever primarily rides in the passenger seat. 
Two is going to be whoever's, you know, rides in the passenger seat, uh, the less amount of time that a secondary person. But then three can be the position for when you rotate the chair around to make your kind of four seating area there. You can get it turned around and rotate it and then hit three to have it kind of move into the position that's most comfortable for when it's on that, that when it's kind of turned around. I like that. And then these do have heated seats. It's just going to be the bottom and uh, that controls right there, right beside your door locks. And then you have your HVAC controls here, very simple. Uh, temperature there, fan there, and then you can you know turn auto AC, adjust where the the air is going. You've got your hazard lights right there, uh, max for defrost circulation, and then your rear defrost is right there. Now this also has the um, I don't even know what to call them, but it's the little little elements that run down the window. So it's, the whole window is is a defrost. That button's right here. So you'll hit this button here and it will 100% eliminate defrost. Like that's the kind of cool thing about this system because you can, even in uh, certain times of the year when it's not really hot or cold outside and you don't necessarily want to run uh, the heat because it's not really, you know, it's not, it's not cold. Um, you can still defrost that without even having to, you have the AC on and hit that to defrost it. Now let's crank or not crank, but we'll just get into turn the turn music off that's not good youtube doesn't like music now as far as the infotainment this is one of my favorite infotainments um i think the range i like the range line better um but this one's not bad like they're almost a tie but i would say i like the range line or i, I should say the pro master infotainment i think i like it a little bit better but this one is really good uh, it has the hey mercedes technology um as you can see there, uh, you can tell, you can ask it to give you direction, directions. You can ask it to make a phone call. You can ask it to turn to a certain radio station. You know, all of those things are possible with the, uh, with the, the, that system. Now, as far as controls, it's very, you know, it's very much like touching an iPad or touching, you know, uh, uh, you know, that kind of instant touch that you expect nowadays. Uh, you can have two phones in here, which I love. Um, and you, of course, once you connect to the device, you can make phone calls, uh, you do all those types of things and then pick which phone you want to do that with. And then there's a little home button right there. There's also a profile option. So you can set in multiple profiles, uh, for all your radio stations and things like that. And then you've got navigation on here. Uh, navigation works great. You know, it's, it's the Mercedes version of the navig navigation, but you just go to where to, you start typing in where you want to go. You type in the full address. Um, you can have favorites. You can go through contacts. Very nice system there. Uh, you can search for restaurants if you want to do that as well. And you can save at home. So if you just always want to tap home, which we don't have set up currently. And then radio, it's you know, it's the Mercedes radio. It's very intuitive, which we're in XM right now. Uh, Sirius XM. And of course, you can go to FM, AM. We don't want anything extra playing right now. And then uh, media is going to be your phone when you have it plugged in or you're going through Bluetooth. And then info is going to give you just info about uh, the engine consumption. And then, of course, you get an owner's manual there. And then there are some apps, uh, not really much on here, but smartphone. And then there's like a little browser right there. You can type in a URL. I'm not sure if you would actually do that. And there's a search option there at the top. You can search a term. And then, of course, you've got your settings here for assistance, you know, your camera parking, your traffic signs, all that kind of stuff. Anything you want to change. The after break assistance, the atten you know, attention assistance, I mean, blind spot, all of that's in here. It's a fantastic you know, system. You can look at the vehicle options here, uh, light options, and then, of course, system for the overall infotainment. And then your center cluster there, uh, now that doesn't flicker in real life. That's just the camera. Uh, you have some different options here. You can see current consumption as far as your MPGs. Uh, it'll show you kind of where you're losing uh, fuel, uh, your kind of normal trip odometer stuff. There's another one. And then you can do miles per hour. Uh, and then of course, you know, they truck these in, so it's only got a few, you know, a few miles on. And then that's just going to show your current consumption as far as, uh, you know, your, your MPGs and stuff like that. So very, you know, it's very simple, not a whole lot going on there, but it's it's really nice. It looks cool. Now, this does have the adaptive cruise control, and this is the updated Mercedes steering wheel. 
Uh, very nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Uh, it does feel like Mercedes to me. Um, now on the left side, the top part here is going to be your center screen. So you've got a home button and back button. And then you can kind of go like, you can see driver assistance there. We can see, uh, well, service. Not anything there, which is good. Trip. You can see navigation in there, which is kind of cool. You can see the radio, uh, media, your phone information, and then settings. So kind of, I mean, like, there's there's quite a bit that you can do with this screen. That's nice. Uh, I think I would probably leave it right there on consumption because I always like to see how I'm doing with my fuel economy. Now that control there, that's how I was controlling the uh, the center um, cluster, whatever you want to call that. It's like a little touch um, pad, like a little touch D-pad. You swipe up and down, you swipe left or right, and then you can click down. There's a, there's actually a button there, and that's how you select things. So this side at the top is going to control that screen. This side at the top is going to control the infotainment, which I'll show you in a second. Then you've got your adaptive cruise here. Turn it on and off. You can set, you know, plus, minus, cancel it, reset, and then that's going to set how far... Uh, you follow someone when you're utilizing adaptive cruise control. I love that this has that. This is a touring coach, and absolutely, a touring coach has to have adaptive cruise control. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to be a touring coach. And then on this side, you're going to have your volume up and down button. You've got a favorites button, a phone call. You can call, uh, start a call, end a call, and then you press that up to get to activate Siri or activate the Mercedes assistant. Either one will do that. And then you've got a really nice, very satisfying wheel here for volume i love this wheel for volume um and then the top the top uh three buttons are going to be related to your infotainment so if i can kind of get these in yep here we go so i can go home which is just going to take me back to the home position which is going to show navigation then i can use this little d-pad here to go around anywhere i want to on the screen and so say i want to go to navigation i can then tap into navigation i can control and go into my favorites and there's not really anything in here but if i wanted to go home and then tap home i'm going home i would just probably tell her to take me home and i can click the back button that takes me back uh, to the main navigation screen and then hit home and that's going to take me back to home i can go over to radio and now use this you know control radio stations which i mean it's just it's a very very cool system if you've owned a mercedes you're like dutch ad we know Mercedes are awesome. Um, and as far as the buttons down here, this is going to take you to cameras, your telephone, maps, radio, volume up and down, uh, home button, power button, and then track. And what does that do? Well, it takes you. Oh, it takes you to your um, vehicle assistant stuff. So let's. I want to show. Well, let me show a couple of things. Uh, on the mirrors, only the top mirror is adjustable from inside. You'll have to adjust the bottom mirror from, you know, actually outside. You've got those mirror controls there. You've got automatic windows on both sides for up and down, which is quite nice. And then you've got your latch there. It is a nice, it feels, feels premium, feels like metal. And then same thing for um, your actual seat adjustments there. Those are nice. And then you've got your lock, unlock, heated seats right there. And then you've got your headlights, a couple of blanks right there. And then this is going to set your um, dash lights. So that's that. And if you have the four-wheel drive option, that's going to be over here. That'll be right there. And travel warning, I think that's for when, if you have um, like your auto level system down. So let me crank this. There we go, just push button, just to gotta have the key in here and it will crank. So it's running now, I don't have any AC running. I'm gonna turn it on because it's like a little bit warm in here. Go down, we don't need a lot of fan noise. What I wanna show you is um, kind of one, the back of the back camera. So that the back camera is really giving you more of what you were on the 23 interstate, it's a more of a rear view camera than a backup camera. So this this screen up here now is more of a rear view camera than a backup camera. And that's because your backup camera is actually gonna be down here. 
So this camera's still on, that doesn't change. Right, that's still there. But now you've got the really nice um, Mercedes backup camera. And then this will give you the option to be able to look kind of this kind of larger screen. You can look down at your hitch, your hitch ball. You have that option. And then kind of just the normal option. Now, something I really like about this is you can see your park sensors right here. So as you get close to something, uh, these will light up. And then you've got the same thing for backing. Uh, it's a really cool system. Let's see. And one of the things I like is as you turn, you can see here, it's actually showing you not just where you're tracking, so you're tracking, but it's also showing where you're going to swing out, right? Because it's a little bit a larger vehicle. So if you're a little bit concerned with, um, you know, can I drive this? Am I going to be able to park it? I don't feel comfortable with this. Um, you really have a lot of assistance when it comes to backing. You can see where you're gonna actually hit something. You can see as I turn more, how much further out I'm gonna swing and how much tighter this side's getting. And if I go back the other way, you'll start to see it do the same thing the other way. I really think, I mean, this is just a cool setup. Let's see if I can give a better angle of that. It's so sunny out today but you can really see how that's changing. And if I put it in drive, it's gonna do the same thing for going forward. And it gives me a look going forward. Yeah, I'm in drive. All right, so, and now I can see what I'm doing going forward. If I start to get close to something. It's a really cool system. And I'm actually gonna pull forward a little bit just so you can see um, the, the way that the parking sensors do. So you're gonna start seeing Oh, the pricks. Now you can see that I'm actually starting to, it can tell, it's telling you that you're coming up on something. So it's a really cool system. It's a very powerful system. So put this in reverse. Go back and you see like how much it's showing you when it comes to actually moving this around. Now I'm not gonna do a test drive with this particular unit. Um, this one's got a home that it's going to go to, but you can really see all the way around you. It's giving you so much information and, um, you can get to that screen by tapping right there. So at any point while you're driving in a parking lot or something like that, you just want some extra help to make sure that you're not going to hit anything. You've got a really nice system to help you understand what's happening with the coach as you're moving around. And then when you're finished, put it in park and that goes off and you're done. Now, as far as the, um, whatever you, we call this nowadays, um, your gear selector. So it's this little handle down is going to put it in drive up is going to put it in reverse. If you go from reverse once, uh, well, it's actually, so the way it works, there's like two, points here so just barely pushing it down takes you to neutral pushing it all the way down takes you to drive same thing with going up just barely pushing it up like that that's going to put me in neutral but then pushing it all the way up is going to put me in reverse and then to put it in park you're going to hit this button on the end and then it goes in park now it does show you at the top of the screen right there where you are as far as the um, gear selector there uh, so you kind of know you I mean you do know what's happening it's not like you don't know what's happening and it does show you for as far as all of your um, lane parcher, your blind spot, all that kind of stuff is showing you in there. And then you do have um, turn signal cameras right there. So that's going to be left. That's going to be, so that's driver's side. That's going to be passenger side right there. So you have that as well. Those are integrated into the mirrors right here uh, on the sides there. So, I mean, really from a 24 foot coach you have everything you need in place uh, to be able to drive this safely and feel comfortable now on the parking brake see if i can get a good shot of this so the parking brake is right here you pull it up it goes into park and it will tell you on the dash that's in park but to be able to turn the the seat around while you're in park you can push this down but it's still in park i didn't push the button in so i'm still in park 
shows it right there, still in park. Now to take it out of park, I'm gonna pull it back up to that top position and then press the button in and then go down. And now I'm out of park. That's how you get out of park on the parking brake. Kind of an old school parking brake. At some point they should go to an electronic parking brake, but they've not done that yet. Now I'm gonna pop over and show you the leveling system and how that works with the Interstate 24, uh, well in this case 24 GL. You can also get the leveling system on the GT. Uh, you cannot get the leveling system on the 19 if you're wondering. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the auto level system that's on this 24 GL. Now you can only get the auto level currently if you also get the E1 package. I think it has something to do with weight. I'm not 100% sure why they have it set up that way. Uh, it seems like to me the E1 package would weigh more than the non-E1 package. Now to get to the auto level, you're gonna look everywhere and go, where is the control? And that's what I did when I first tried to find it. It's under the passenger seat. So let me show you where that is. It's gonna be under this little door here. So this right here Velcro's up. And then you've got the screen that is right here. And it's, it's a touch screen. Now what is cool about this system is it's wireless. And I believe that you're able to control the auto level system uh, within like 30 feet of the coach using this touch panel. Uh, it has a battery built in. There's a little charge, your charge connection right there. And then, you know, it's wireless. Super cool. I, I don't know. That's like, that's just really cool. Now, a couple of things you do have to have the engine running. All right, so let me get into the cockpit here. So you gotta have the engine running. I'm gonna run, crank that up. So that's running. You gotta have the park brake engaged. And then once you have that set up, you're able to go into um, the, try to find a good angle here. There we go. You can get into the actual control system to, to control it. So you've got your four points. It's kind of showing this looks a little bit more like a B plus to me. But then we can uh, we can pull everything up using that button there. Auto level is right there. And then that's your home button there. Now in the home button, I can just hit automatic. And now it's gonna start actually leveling the coach. I think it does the back first. You kind of see it shows like a little level, a little ball level there. So you hit auto and then it's gonna drop the, the back airbags. Those go down. And once the airbags are down, it then should start raising the, the back of the coach up. And right now it's just saying the only option I have right now is to hit stop. So, yeah, it looks like we're hit, you know, of course we're lower in the back. That is accurate. We are in a slope setting. We're further back on this, the back side here. All right, so now it's actually running things. I hear it going. Wow, it's quick. So it looks like it just made contact with the ground. You can actually watch the ball as it goes up. That's pretty slick right there. All right, it's pretty much level. Now that that is legitimately the fastest I've ever seen anything level in my life when it comes to RVs. It's level. I mean, look at that. That is just, and it just kind of went back to home that's phenomenal. That went so fast. Now, as far as putting it away, you're gonna go into this can, th that button there, and then you're just gonna basically hit this up button, and it immediately starts going down. 
So those are already going up. They're already back up. And I can hear the compressor running and it's leveling the airbags back off. That, that is, that is honestly an absolutely incredible leveling system. I would get it. That, this auto level system is incredible. Um, EP, EP seems to be the brand. Um, EP hydraulics is what it says. EMP, EMP hydraulics. That's who the system is. Uh, works great. That's all I got to say about that. If you've made it to this point, thank you for watching the video. As always, I really do appreciate everyone who watches the video, uh, everyone who has liked and subscribed. Thank you for doing that. Now, this is a great coach. The The lounge, uh, it's, it's something that I think you should consider if you're in the market for a touring coach, especially Airstream, and you're looking at the GT. The GT has kind of been the one that everybody kind of goes to I think the GL should be one that you should definitely consider. I love the layout. Uh, I like how you have the four seats up there. Even if it's just two of you or one of you, uh, I like how you can turn that kind of into a lounge area and have those seats kind of facing uh, in. That's just a cool setup. I think that, and, I mean, you still have this space back here. You've got plenty of room for friends to come and hang out or to play cards at night or have dinner together. Uh, so if you're looking for a touring coach, definitely consider the GL. And as far as the E1 package, that does add kind of a, a hefty increase. So if that is something you're wanting, like you know why you want it and how it's going to benefit you uh, as far as use goes. But I love that one, you can run everything in here off of it. You can run the AC over at night if you need to, even when there's quiet hours and you couldn't run a generator, you are able to run um, the AC system. I think from a touring coach standpoint, the E1 package makes a lot of sense because you can run everything as you're going down the road. And if you're going to just park for the night as you're going to a destination, the E1 package again makes a lot of sense because you can run everything even overnight. And people don't even, don't know that you're running stuff really because there's not a generator running. And you're just running off of that, that uh, battery pack. But again, it's something that you really have to think through of how you're going to use it uh, because... Um, you're limited. Like if you go out remote and run that battery all, all the way down, uh, I guess it's similar to if you run out of gas, you've got to go get gas. So in this case, you've got to go get, you've got to go charge the battery up. Uh, so just something to think about. But if you have any questions about the E1 package, the Timberline system, uh, the Interstate uh, GL or the GT, feel free to reach out. All of my contact information is down there below. And of course, if you're interested in getting one, also you know reach out as well. Uh, if you want to stop by the store, be sure to ask for Chad. I'll be happy to show you around and kind of what we have currently. Uh, and then uh, if you're looking for specifications, those are down in the description. Just click on that link. Other than that, I hope you're having a great day and hopefully we'll talk soon. But for now, bye.